Hello and welcome everyone here again to another live stream here on Mikey's Flight Deck. And uh, today we will have to uh, build a gauge. What I've said, yes. Um, in the last stream, uh, I have showed you um, how to make a panel. And by the way, I can even show what has uh, come out um, as a result. So hello to everyone here um, in the chat. Pascal spotting videos. Hello, good to have you here. And if anyone else is here, just say hello. Uh, so I know everything is fine here, especially with the audio quality. I hope you can hear me. So um, what have we done in the last stream? I will show this to you right now here. Um, where do we have it? There it is. Oh, we have designed this um, air conditioning panel. I have seen uh, when I uh, yeah, stopped the stream last time after three, nearly four hours, um, we have had um, this panel nearly finished and um, I've made the top panel with the yeah, all the holes and the engravings. Um, and the middle panel, the bottom plate, um, and we have created a backlighting panel. Yes. Um, and now after this, I have uh, set three hours uh, again on this panel uh, to finish it all and align some things here a little bit more, um, especially uh, the width of this panel. I've said I've made this uh, 144 millimeters and I thought to myself, I have designed this overhead frame 145 millimeters wide, this um, uh, column for these panels. And I had, uh, and, and if I would have used this new uh, measurement, I would have to uh, change the drawings of the overhead um, frame construction and everyone who has downloaded this before has to change uh, their builds. And so I changed it again to 145 millimeters in width. And so I had to align some of the holes again. Yes. So uh, Jan van Grafos, hello. Good to have you here. I want to show you what came out here because I have lasered uh, the panels out already and uh, painted them. This, let's see, this is the top panel now, not engraved until now. Here we have the middle panel. It came out like this. I have left on this panel this time uh, the covering foil that uh, comes when you buy such a panel. And in most cases, this is intact. Um, sometimes when you buy these uh, plexiglass sheets, the foil already came off. There are other um, acrylic uh, manufacturers that use uh, another method to cover their acrylic with uh, a sort of paper, I think, especially when you buy those 3D printers, uh, some parts are still covered with this uh, foil, I think you know what I mean. And this sticks very good and would be a better um, covering when you paint it. But I have just um, yes um, cut in these lines here and removed the, uh, this covering on the areas that should uh, be painted. And then I painted it over and removed after this the whole cover. And with this method, I didn't have to uh, make all the coverings again here on this middle panel. Yes, and uh, the bottom panel, I already, I, I only clamped uh, down under this package here to uh, spray all the sides here. And as I have seen before, these sides are not covered with paint really well. I am, I think it's because of uh, the width here. There is not an, enough uh, space that uh, the color would stick there. It it doesn't stick very good here. So I will have to paint this again with a brush manually. But I know this problem already. 
So. Pascal is spotting uh, videos. Uh, do you buy plexiglass sheets online? So, um, yes, by the way, when you have any questions here um, concerning, um, I think, panel making, gauge making uh, today, then just write them down in the chat. Um, no, I don't uh, buy plexiglass online. Uh, let me explain why. Um, I have looked out there, uh, of course, and the prices of the um, plexiglass are really the same um, like you would have to pay when you buy this in a yeah in, in a store that uh, sells plexiglass not a home depot um, they not uh, selling plexiglass not not my home depots i i have here in the in the region uh, they sell a, a, a cheaper um yeah a cheaper made uh, pl plexiglass uh, acrylic uh, not really cheaper uh, from the price um, and this is uh, doesn't um, yes um, hold uh, the the form really well uh, when you cut it with uh, your router it uh, tends to melt uh, faster than uh, than the real plexiglass um, yes and this is bad for your uh, engraving or cutting bits <clears throat> so but why I don't um, uh, buy plexiglass online is uh, that you not only have to pay for the uh, material but you also have to pay for the transport and this is something that comes on top and really makes it very unattractive uh, to buy it online and so i went to a, a local dealer um, in in the region and they made a good price especially when you buy whole sheets um, I not came there and wanted to have a 30 by 50 centimeter acrylic sheet. I said, I want two sheets, two complete sheets um, of um, transparent plexiglass and one complete sheet uh, of white plexiglass. And this is uh, two meters by one, uh, one meter and 20 centimeters. Uh, so enough plexiglass and I said you don't need to to cut this uh, much just uh, cut it um, in half the whole uh, the whole length so that I can transport it in my car that's all and uh, yes this uh, was at the end cheaper than I would have uh, when I would have bought this online so manual Jesus hello Martin Weiser hello here to the chat and a question from Manuel Jesus. I have problems cutting plexiglass with TNC. It melts and I don't get no quality. Can you give me any advice? Yes, that's what I, I said um, before. When you, you, you have to ensure that you have plexiglass or good acrylic. Um, I think the, uh, there are two ways uh, acrylic can be produced, extruded and I, d I don't know what's uh, what's the word uh, in English for this other one. Um, is it casted acrylic? I, I don't know. Um, and I think not the extruded one. The other one um, is good for for the uh, engraving. I have the extruded one because it is cheaper and it works also good for me. Um, compared to this cheap acrylic from the Home Depot. So um, when you want to cut acrylic and not melt everything around your router bit, then you have to use a, um, a router that uh, can cut at very low speeds. I have said this uh, before in, in a live stream um, some, some weeks ago. Um, I'm using this uh, Cress spindle. It's, it's not Cress as they, and they are, um, uh, transformed to um, their bond they are bought from another company and AM, is it AMG I don't know exactly um, but when you uh, google for for Cress spindle uh, then you will uh, find the actual manufacturer and this spindle can go down uh, to 5000 uh, rounds per minute and this is a speed uh, you should use when you cut uh, acrylic. You have to ensure that the acrylic uh, is uh, really tight on your 
uh, table because uh, when you cut at low speeds then the vibration can uh, increase when it is not secured very well but i'm cutting acrylic with this uh, super glue method and uh, the the tape so tape and super glue method i explained this in one of my videos and this works really well so use a good and sharp router bit i'm using a um, three millimeter uh, fish head uh, router bit i have explained this in a in a live stream before not these uh, router bits with this tip here um, because this tip isn't really sharp and it has to um, yeah, use force to come into the acrylic and these fish are a uh, fish head um the fish tail is it is it called fish tail uh router bits and they have um something like this uh, they are looking like uh, the tower of sauron and uh these uh, tips here are also sharp and they can um cut into the acrylic at the beginning when they uh touch the surface of the material and you don't need to go very deep into it uh, when you have cut through the acrylic because you yeah because the tip already uh, cuts out your channel that you are cutting so very low rpms and a sharp router bit from time to time i'm cleaning my router bit with, with a little bit of alcohol and uh, to, to get rid of any material left there yeah, Farid Lackham, hello and welcome to the chat. Yo, Pascal Sporting videos. I hope this. No, thank you. So that was the other one. Genau. Uh, manual cheeses. I hope that answered your question. Cutting acrylic only with low speeds. When you are uh, engraving, by the way, then you can uh, go uh, up with the speeds a little bit more. Um, 10,000, 12,000 RPMs uh, with these um, um, V bits. This works. Yeah, or you you have a laser, then you uh, don't have this, these problems anymore. So let's come finally to the topic of this um, stream here now and to what we want to do today. So I already showed this and this is a panel we have made in the last stream and now we are looking to the upper left region here on this panel there has to be a gauge i will bring this in here and i will um, show you also the the picture in the bottom right later so that so you can uh, follow me what i'm doing here so yeah this is visible here so this is the gauge we will make this this ring I think we already have made this ring. I've, I've seen this there <clears throat> here. And then make a, a top plate, a middle plate, a bottom plate. I have laying something around here. There. A sneak preview now just for all the visitors of this stream here. Um, yeah, okay. Also, so you have seen this in the, in the big picture here. Now I come back to the total again here a sneak preview to all of you um, this will be the content of my next video i hope to bring this out um, next sunday this is uh, my first uh, dual needle gauge here i have made and so for all of you to know this what we will do we will make a top plate here this has two top plates but i don't think we will need this here we will uh, design a, a pointer. I have already prepared uh, such a pointer, um, but I think I will, I will show this uh, to you how I made mine here. So the middle plate, which is just um, yeah, to hold the backlighting here and a bottom plate. In this case, it holds two um, servo motors um this is only a single needle gauge and we will only install one servo motor yes between here are the um the gears we will make um and there are also holes in all of these uh, plates here to uh, let through and hold um, the the shaft where this um, needle here sits on 
Yes. In in this case, by the way, and I hope I will. Uh, I think I will do this in this um, gauge too. I have brought the gears to the inside of the gauge. In my first single needle gauge, I have installed the servo motors the other way around so that the gear came out here at the bottom side. It makes it easier to install the, the gears here. And especially when you want to disassemble it, it's maybe a little bit easier to remove it, um, but it saves space behind your overhead. And, and there isn't the danger that something can uh, clamp here into this gear, maybe a cable or something like this. I don't know why I have done this before and this works really well. Between these, there are used uh, 30 centimeter, um, uh, centimeter, um, 30 millimeters, 30 millimeter hex standoffs um, with uh, three millimeter screws in it. I think at, um, between the bottom and the middle plate, you can also use a 15 millimeter hex standoff, which I'm using to install my backlighting panels. Yeah, I have done this now with these here. Maybe it, it can be better because the, the light has more way here from the middle plate to the upper plate. So it can diffuse um, and, and spread a little bit better. And you don't have uh, such a, a point where the light is very intensive. Maybe. So, sure. And this is what we will do today here. <clears throat> So, yeah, let's um, get rid of this here. I will do it, uh, place it in my side screen and then give you the, um, the panel picture so that you can follow me. I think we can uh, get rid of, of all these, these other stuff here. Can we? Yes, we can. Then I can um, scale it a little bit bigger for you. Oh, wonderful. Okay, like this. So um, what have we here? We already have um, yes, um, defined the space. It's a 50 millimeter ring, um, uh, the inside of this, uh, this ring. And this is also the, the diameter of this hole here. Um, yeah, is this important for this gauge? Mm. Not, not really, but, but you should uh, be aware that everything that should be visible should be inside this uh, 50 millimeter radius. So let's, um, yeah, let's stick a little bit to some things we, I have done before so I can copy some things and not make everything new. Um, so where will I search for this? It's the fuel, the fuel gauge. Oop. Engage. Yes, this is what it should like uh, should look like later. Okay, I will make a copy and and work with this. So what have I done here? Um, I have made a document with a fifty six millimeter dimension in both direction. It's a rectangle here, and. I have rounded these edges here with a radius of two millimeters. You don't need to do this. Um, it's I have done this only because uh, it feels uh, a little bit better. And if anything is there in, in the way, I think then I don't have an edge that uh, sticks in and collides with something there. It's just, uh, just for a look and feel. Also, not too important. And here are these holes, um, the four holes, uh, five millimeters from both edges. So no, from the, the top edge and the left edge and here from the top and the right edge, you get the, uh, the, uh, the idea, I think. I have designed these uh, half a millimeter wider than the screw. So if there isn't uh, something uh, fitting completely right, then I have a little bit of room to wiggle something in place. 
and the screw will um, slide in more easy than um, than when it would be exactly three millimeters. So a three millimeter screw should go through here and I have made this a half a millimeter bigger. You have to look out what screws you will use and uh, so have to um, yeah, keep this in mind when you design these holes. Here in the middle, I will use a four millimeter uh, rod. I can show this to you. You can buy these rods. Um, yes, um, so I can show this a four millimeter clear acrylic rod. Um, these can be bought in well, every length uh, you want to have, and I cut this um, to the length I will need later. Again, to let this rod uh, going through there, I make this hole a little bit bigger. Don't make it too big, then it and then um, it can wiggle inside, and uh, this would be or could be visible um, on the needle later. Sure, that's it. I will save this as my new um, middle plate. So we make the air conditioning panel, and this will be. Uh, just for you to show you how I name these files um, air cont panel gauge and middle for the middle plate so uh, yeah well saved and we have the the middle plate um, should we start now yeah we should start now with this uh, with the top plate so I make a copy of this and I will call this top. So here we have the, the top plate and now I have to, uh, yeah, I have to look out. The, the needle comes through here and now I will um, copy here in these, this ring here, maybe the, the two rings. Where do I have these? Layer three. Oh. Where are they? Ah, down there, okay. This is also something I have started now uh, after my my last live stream, arranging um, my layers a little bit. I have the the cutting uh, layer, which is all the the outlines. I have a text layer with all this text here, and uh, some some other things here, um, like these lines here, uh, everything for the engraving. So insert it and bring it to the middle which is 28 millimeter from the left and bottom so there we are so this is the region uh, where we um, can view everything that's inside uh, of our gauge everything outside of this inner ring will be invisible later So where should we start with? Um, I think I will have a look at another gauge and define how long these um, stripes should be. And then we will make these stripes here. So I will have again a look, I think, at the fuel gauge. the top there we are yeah I think this this should be good and uh, this is already oh there there we have it 9.5 millimeters are the the long stripes and one millimeter thick 
yeah okay and they go down to here where we are 46 millimeters from the top so this is something we will arrange now here have we said 46 46 yeah okay so and we will make this uh, rectangle here I'm I'm not copying everything here because uh, when you start designing um, a gauge for the first time then you don't have these copies so you should have seen um, one time how to make this so, by the way I'm using um, call draw here you can use every other um, software that uh, you are familiar with. There is Inkscape uh, when you are searching for a free software. Um, I think you can also make this in Fusion. There are people making this in AutoCAD. You can use um, Adobe Illustrator when you um, already have an, an Adobe um, yes, a subscription. So use whatever you want. Um, the only thing you should be aware is that it uh, should come out with a vector graphics um, which are scalable graphics not these pixel based graphics that you know from Photoshop for example um, um, yes so we can come out with a pass later for our CNC program Yo. so one millimeter I've said in width there it is 9.5 in the height and now let's move the lower edge to 46 i have said move the lower edge sometimes it's not taking my inserts so and align it to the middle so there it is where it should be later i don't need to fill this um, because the filling uh, is done later uh, during the engraving um, you can do this uh, to get a sense of how it will look uh, like later so I can uh, paint this background uh, black and uh, fill these white but uh, th this doesn't give me any advantage at this point here so and I see already when you look at the gauge here that the yeah this uh, stripe here isn't uh, aligned in the middle it's a little bit out to the yeah left or right it depends on where you want to start so let's estimate where this should be so i i bring in this panel a little bit bigger here to explain what i'm thinking about now oh yeah that's big so here in the middle straight down there is no big line it's left or right um, but this here this big um, lines here I think they look to me like they are exactly on the 90 degrees position and so we can estimate where the other ones can be are this what are these it's it's not uh, 30 degrees with 30 degrees uh, the 60 would be up here it is a little bit less uh, I think in some programs we, we could draw now a, a line here can we make this 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 would uh, be something I have never done be before let's let's try this um, take a screenshot and where we are and can can I insert this here no I can't can I insert something like this does anyone know can I insert um, a screenshot here hmm. I don't think so not to we can get this too boring for you um, so I would now uh, Google and, and search for it how to insert 
something uh, like this here. Maybe we can can do this on a new layer. Oops. Can we do this on a new layer? Ah, not. No, we can't. Can we import something? Maybe. Uh, let's save this screenshot. So saved and try a last try. Click and drag to resize, press enter. Okay. Let's try. Oh, is this cool? Okay. So, and now I would try to use um, a guideline, place it here just to estimate the angle. Oh, is this cool? And yeah, let's make another one. Or maybe uh, we don't need another one. We just have to uh, change the angle of this guideline here. So let's modify it as an angled. So what could this be? 25 degrees angled and from the center here, modify. Oh, nearly, nearly a little bit less. So 24. Have to set this guideline to the middle. So, and this one to have my um, uh, rotation center correctly. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is what I'm I'm talking about. So a little bit less, thirty-three. Uh, Twenty-two. Yes, that's it. 22. Oh, oh nearly no? here. Now it's not uh, exactly over the, the middle. Can I move it a little bit up here? Hmm. Oh, come on. Yeah. Let's now move it down. So that is, it is aligned to the center line ah here and now you can see this is not exactly um we can use a little bit more here for this line so again 23 well, we will reach the goal ah good what have i done Three twenty four. Yeah. yeah, let's use twenty four. So, um, you can in invest much time in uh, in such details here, um, but I think yes, when when you are trying to uh, to replicate um, a panel then yeah you can try the best uh, that you can um, and invest some some time here to uh, get near to the original so now we have here our 24 and yes now we have to uh, align the first one and i think i will start here with a 100 uh, line so this would be 90 90 degrees minus 24 and, uh, right here. So minus minus 24 on 66 degrees. Here, let's try this. Uh, get oh, rid of this. Um, so let's have a look. Where can we reach this angle? So. 
24, yeah, minus 24, no? right. Yeah, there it is. There should be the 100 later. So let's try and rotate this. Go to the rotation mode and the rotation center yeah, should be placed here in the middle. Yeah, now it's in the middle. And can I just insert? Uh, ah, no, not here. Um, here. Ah, okay. So, what is this? Uh, 90, 66, 140, so minus, yeah, there it is. Yes, it sticks a little bit over, but this is okay. There is it. So how many of these we have to, how many copies we have to make? So we have this one here and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. From zero to one hundred are ten. Okay. And now we will make go to the transformation copies. So this should be nine copies, I think. Uh, and rotate them. Yeah, a full rotation to the um, other, to the zero point would be, oh, there it is. How much would this be? Um, this would be 180 um, plus one, two, three, three times uh, 24. 24 by three, it's 72 degrees plus 180 degrees are 252 degrees. Okay. Oops, not this panel, there we are, 252. So, apply. Okay, this was too much. But why? I have said nine copies, at least 10 copies. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, it's the right, but the are okay. But the degrees are not the, okay, these are less. Okay, let's try. Okay, 10 copies is right. Let's go back here. Let's try what, what comes out when we go to... Ah, this is a step per rotation. Now I, I got it, okay. Uh, here we insert our 24 degrees, right? Ah, and there we are with what it should look like. It's not completely here, the how it, how it should like in, in the original, I think. Let's have a look at the original. This looks to me like the, yeah, the, the, the center line should be right between these two here. So I think it should be a little bit more than 24. 24.5, uh, let's try. No, okay, well, we will. Yeah, this 25 looks better. <laughs> and now we are estimating it again. This looks not as good. I think 25 was the best. No, oh, yes. Yeah, it could be a little bit more, but I think it, it would be more complicated with um, point two such values. Um, the uh, 25 is a way we can calculate with. So that's it. 
and one, two, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ah, and now we have too much copies. Okay. Nine copies was right. Is this better? I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that's our ten. Is this looking right? Let's compare it to the this should be uh more down here. This is right, this looks right, everything looks right here. Ah, oh, it's, it's a it's a copy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ah, okay, that's a mistake I'm making. You should have said this to me. It's not only to look today for you, you can help me. <laughs> so, back 10 copies. Jesus. Okay. Now, I think it's looking better. Right. Let's stay with this and save. Uh, air conditioning panel gauge top, save. Always save your work. Nothing is is more painful than a computer crash, and uh, one hour of work is lost. So now um, let's come to the small to the small stripes. There are some more. Bring this in the middle again. So uh, four between every one of these here. I think we will yeah, try to, uh, to make this area between the 100 and the 90, uh, place these four uh, small uh, shorter stripes and then make copies of these and rotate them. I think this, this can work. So four short copies how long have i made this at the fuel gauge and these these are a little bit thinner i think than the original ones but to uh, have my pennies look right uh, let's compare it to the picture again they are a little bit thinner right but how much what would you say? I would say 60 or 40, uh, 60 or 70 percent. Let's say 70. Yeah, 0 0.7. 0 0.7 millimeters wide and the length is, I think, also 60 percent. Yeah, that's. Let's try with uh, 70 because we um, have a little bit more room here. So um, let's start with this one here. Um, and now make, make a copy. By the way, now when we are here, so we have uh, just to to make all our um all layers here right what i have said before make a cut layer so in the cut layer there is everything um let's get uh yeah uh, every line that has to be cut out later which are these here and we will move them to the cutting layer yeah these are all these lines so we can close the cutting layer and now make um how can we call this layer um what is this for a layer ah oh, this is a screenshot okay nah can i can't i rename this ah there um let's say big stripes And 
Now we'll make another layer, small stripes. Not stars and stripes, no? <laughs> so, um, big stripes. Where are we are? Why is this thing blue now? Well, because it is there. Okay, strange. So copy and paste it here to small stripes. And now uh, I think I should copy another one. I will uh, tell you um, why I do this. I should copy this. No, come on. Ah, I have to mark the, um, the layer. There. Copy and paste it. So why have I copied this and not this one here? It's because I uh, want to scale it down. Uh, scale it down. And this is already what I, I said. Why has this a height of um, uh, 1.1? 1 .1. Okay, because it is angled. Yeah, okay. Um, we have to draw a, a new one. So I can explain this. Um, this thing is angled and um, yeah, extremely explained, you can uh, see this on this one here. So the width is uh, when we do this with a guideline, now come on, from here, this corner here, uh, to, to this corner here, that's the width, um, and not the width inside of this um, form here. And so when I scale this down, I would uh, get a completely different result here. And so it's better to uh, start with a new one. So get rid of this and just draw a clean new one, small stripe. Um, again, the outline is a hairline. And then we have 9. 9. No, not 9.2, uh, 9.5, 9 right? Point five and the width I have uh, set um, point seven a little bit smaller. How does it look? Now let's compare this to the uh, the original one. I think we can use sixty. Hmm? Like this. So, and the length something like this. Nope. Something about seven. Can this be? Here, there it is. Yeah, yeah, this, this looks right. So seven millimeters long. Um, so I placed this in the middle, 28, there it is. And uh, the left side there is Four, nah, not 46 millimeters. Um, uh, where uh, let's look at the fuel gauge. We're at the top of this, this one here. Uh, the top is 55.5 from the bottom by so just half a millimeter from the top. Okay, half a millimeter. Uh, so we have 56. In general, so 55.5 from the to the right. There. Okay. Now we have to rotate this. Now, come on, watch my, watch my mouse here. Uh, let's rotate this down. Day rights 50 to 60. What, what do you mean 50 to 60 uh, from the from the scale? Yeah, All right now. Yes, uh, I have chosen now 60 there. 
this uh, looks right i think and now we have to rotate it have i i have already moved it this is uh, dangerous yeah there it is oh okay yeah everything looks right so and now rotate it finally um so let's start here minus ah so oh okay <laughs> my fault the rotation center has to be in the middle of course so it is in the middle uh, so this is the position of the big one and now we have to go up a little bit so not um so a little bit less um can i just say minus 24 no no that's so minus 20 oh looks good four uh, four degrees left less um maybe we can calculate this uh we have 20 25 20 is this 25 yeah 25 degrees between these here and uh we have to uh how much many spaces uh so one two three four five and five five degrees can this be maybe um ah, but, but we have started here at minus 24 am i right minus 24 huh and now five degrees on top there we are let's make a copy um add another five degrees ah the rotation center is wrong no not no it's it, no it's right um another five can this come out good copy just to just to test it another five yeah i think this is what we are looking out here so um five degrees yeah i think we can try to take this already as a as a group we will arrange these here as a group so we will right click and group objects and now make our rotation trick with these here um, how many copies? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, again, this copy link. Um, let's try nine copies. 25 degrees, apply. Ooh. Oh, God. Um, again, the rotation center. Um, center is here, 28 by 28. Wow, yeah, that's it. This is what we're looking for. Okay, cool. Huh? Yeah, yep, that's it. So we'll get rid of all the guidelines and save. Very important. So, Manuel Jesus, why don't you put the uh, background image and copy the position of each brand? Um, I'm I'm really careful. I have used you have seen I, I have used the the background uh, image to estimate uh, these positions here, um, but sometimes um, when you use this image, it, it can be uh, photographed from a little angle 
maybe. And then um, yeah, some some views can uh, can yeah. How can I say this? Uh, can can trick you, betray you, something like this. I don't know what what the word I could use. Um, and uh, then you can draw something uh, from a wrong angle. So I'm I'm very careful. I'm I'm using the image as a reverence. But I'm not sticking 100% uh, to it, and I think we we came out with something um, that that works for us. And I have shown this. Uh, I don't know how how many of you were here uh, in the last live stream where we have um, made the panel. I have uh, showed this uh, to you that sometimes uh, the panel makers uh, are using um, different fonts even. And um, this has um, confused me a, a lot. Um, I can show this again to you. Uh, yeah, maybe here, this, uh, that's a, a perfect example here. At the pneumatic panel, look at the four of this panel here. Yeah, you see the four, it's a, it's a closed form. And now we're looking over here to the panel we are doing now to this four, a completely different one. The two here, you can see this rounded body of the two. I think we'll f uh, we don't find this here at this panel. Yeah, it's a straight line up here. Also not straight. It's no 45 degrees, something like this, uh, but straighter than the other one. And this is something you should uh, should be aware. Of. And I have decided that I don't stick to these fonts. I'm using one font. Um, for the whole panel, if I can, <laughs> I have uh, until I I haven't found this uh, real font. I'm yeah, I have used another one. Uh, Futura, for example, is a good font uh, to start with, but I'm uh, using. I can uh, show this name here to you. Um, text, text. Where is text? Just ah, uh, yeah. Here we have we have here. Do we have already text? Ah, come on. Let's let's show this uh, text probe team. Here, this is the name of the font MS uh, thirty three fifty five, and now carefully eight, not nine. I have uh, named my um, with the ending nine because I have modified this. We can make a, um, an excursion to uh, this thing I have modified. Um, but I think first of all we we stick to the to the gauge making, and after this I, I can show you a little bit about uh, font modifications. But um, yeah, but this is the font, uh, a military font, uh, that I think comes near this original font here, and uh, especially the the numbers. Anything else here in the chat? Uh, so Rico Black, if the image is not perfect, there would be distortions. Distortions. What are the distortions here now? Uh, okay. Uh, does Boeing use different suppliers for the gauges? Uh, otherwise, I have no idea why the font would be different. Yes, that's um, something I have thought too. Yep. Um, they have used an, another uh, supplier, right? And or um, the the old uh, one wasn't available uh, anymore, and they have used this because the planes have have an age, and uh, yeah, then the panels change. So what are we here? The fuel panel? No. Here we are. Um, now let's stick. Let's bring in some um, numbers with our font. What do we do we need? I bring this to my other screen here. You you are uh, you can see the the panel on your um, bottom right. So a zero. Oh. Where's my font? Ah, there. A zero. Fantastic. <laughs> so the size. Uh, let's start with 11, oops, not here, haven't I modified? 
11 I said. So, and move this down. I think it must be bigger. Hmm? Well, not really. We can we can try something and fill these um, rectangles. Maybe we can uh, see this better then. Mm, object property. Let's make a fill color black. So the font, um, yeah, it, it needs an outline. It must be a little bit um, bigger here, a contour. Um, whoop, there, off. I'm using a contour of point um, oh, uh, zero six millimeters. Apply. Hmm. Ah, to the outside. To the outside. Apply. Yeah, that's it. Better. Can be a little bigger. What have I used at the fuel panel? Uh, pro. That's the reason why you should there. Uh, why you should uh, name all your your layers well. So object uh, text property is there. Uh, Seventeen. Ah, it's um. Ah, there I have uh, used yeah used a, a different font. Okay. Um, let's look at another panel. Uh, the last panel I have made the pneumatics panel there i should have used this other font um, where is it gauge top ah there oh i have also used a, a different font Ay, 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 ay. 17 okay I think we'll have to go a little bit bigger maybe let's uh, try and start with with 12 ah we go back the distortion uh, was an answer for uh, for manual cheers okay yep okay all right next uh, what do we have 20 20 let's copy this did we copy? Yeah, well, no, we didn't copy. Copy and paste there. And modify it. I said modify it. There, 20. And it seems like the contour isn't copied. So again, apply, is it? No, the contour isn't in there. Ah, there it is. Why didn't it show it before? 12 points looks good. Yes, it's, I think this too, 12 point looks good. So what have we next? Uh, yeah, 40, 60, 80, 100. Okay. Ah, and... Uh, don't get lazy. Um, new layer here. Um, let's call it text. And move our text in there. And after this, I can show you again this this cool trick uh, to export these fonts for your CNC. That has cost me days. So where it is? Uh, and the 40. <laughs> we will add the contour later. 16. Have I copied it? Oh, yeah. Uh, 80. And finally, 100. 
there. So, and now add the contour. You can't add a contour uh, to um, multiple fonts at once. You have to do this with everyone. Oh, but we have done this quickly. Oh, and now arrange them. So the 20, I think, should be right in the in the middle. Okay, now ah, compared to the original one, it, it isn't in the middle anymore. I think oh. now this one is well, maybe I will do this um, later um, after the, the, the stream again adding a little bit more later uh, of rotation to all these stripes here uh, to bring these two lines here in the exact same um, to the exact same level on the horizontal middle here of this here but okay we'll stick to this now here uh, what is this doing here now for the stream so boop, boop, boop. There, ah, we have doubled this. Okay. Okay, there we are. And here we'll add the um, contour apply. So, yeah, finally. Okay, we'll add the something like here. Always look where these um, ends of uh, these yeah, stripes here would uh, would hit uh, the number. For example, the the distance a little bit, oh, much less, well, like this. Okay, go over to the forty. The forty touches this uh, stripe here. I don't think I want to have this on my panel. No. <laughs> so uh, I think this this can be right. The sixty. I get more to the, to the left over here. Something like this. And the 80. I will look to the the upper right roundings of the, the zero. Uh, like this here. Okay. And the 100. There we are. So uh, like this here. Now, you have to look out on what tools you are using. Now I'm I'm uh, trying. I will try to do this on a the laser. Then the distance isn't the the problem for the laser, I think. But for an engraving bit, uh, you should watch out that the objects don't come too near to each other. Just uh, not to run into trouble um, and and yeah, cut away this um, this space here. Pascal spotting videos. Is it difficult to make the servos with two pointers, for example, at the cabin pressure panel? Here, <laughs> two pointers? No, it's um, yeah, it's it's more. Uh, it's more difficult than a single one, yes. Um, but um, once you have the idea and know how to make this, then you can um, uh, calculate this into your your panel. I will. I, will, I can say some uh, something about um, uh, making it with two needles when when we come here. I, I promise. Yeah, but. I think it's it's already finished. Or are we missing something? Ah, the the text. Okay, uh, temp. We want to have temp here as a text. So let's um, copy this and make temp out of it um, with a point. Okay. Oh, ha! And there we run into one problem. Um, 
Uh, because I have modified uh, the font in a in a free program that only can uh, store a uh, save 50 fonts. Um, I don't have a point anymore. Uh, uh, are we saying point or dot? You know what I mean. Um, I will do this without this uh, point now. So also add a contour 0 0.06, uh, 0 0.06 to the outside there. Yeah, looks better. And is it 12 points? Let's make 11 points. Huh? Not mark all 11 points. Mm, when we compare it, ah, I think I think 11 point is here for 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 text is better. So and it will be placed here. Where should it, uh, how should this uh, look when it's placed in the, in the middle? 28. Ooh, no, let's, this doesn't look right. Okay, so back to the, a little bit more to the right. Uh, and the height. Go. Yeah. Looks, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit, I think it's only a little bit different. Let's um, look at some details here. I bring over this um, picture. Let's bring over this picture here. Uh, yeah, you can see this. And I bring it ah, down here and there. We can compare it. Um, the temp. I think uh, compared to the 40, it's good. But uh, when you look at the 60, it isn't. The 60 begins here um, above the middle of the M and the P. And this is something that let me, lets me estimate that the text is even smaller. The height looks already right. Maybe it's, it's a little bit smaller. Let's try 10. Hmm. It doesn't make bring uh it doesn't bring very much here. Ah, but I don't think I can make it as small so that the um yeah, the M and the P mill is underneath the the 60. Maybe the the 6 is a little bit uh yes, more over here to the to the 0. Can try something like this. It's not so important. We don't have to be too accurate. Um, so we can uh, bring them a little bit more together, like this. Bring them over here. Mm, no, they are bigger here. I think. This is uh, too accurate. I think it's it's okay when we do it like this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, when I do the rotation, I think it will um, get more worse, maybe because um, this this uh, stripe here will come to the left. Then, I think. I think. And uh, then the 60 has also come more to the left and the 40 doesn't move very much. Um, I, I, will, I will see, but hey, come, come on. It's uh, in a, especially in a dark panel. Okay, but the C, yes, um, degrees Celsius. Uh, we are still missing down here. Um, oh, I hope I, ah, this, this font never had um, Celsius, I think. Um, Hmm, this can be tricky. Um, let's copy uh, this here. Insert it, bring it down, make a C out of it. So here we have the big C, but I don't think we have the circle. Ah, no, every every other thing is the A. Okay, we will um, make this circle from another font. 
Mm. Here. Oh, which font I have used here? Futura. Yeah. Okay. So we will add this in front. Uh, Futura, where we have Futura MDBD. There we are. And we are doing this one a little bit smaller. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, 17. Bring it down a little bit smaller, huh? And uh, yeah, smaller, okay. And the contour, I think, to both, or even more. Um, point one millimeter. Oh. oh, yeah, that's too large. Um, point two. Hmm. Nothing changes. The outside. Ah, that's better. Yeah, that's too much. Um, point six. Oof. Ah, yeah, point zero six. Oh, what am I doing? Point zero six. Ah, better. Can even yeah, so you you can read it later better. Okay. Uh, it should be a little bit more up here, uh, level to the zero. Uh, mark these two and bring them up, and a little bit smaller. I no, no, not not really, but it has. Uh, to get this contour, boof, there it is. Perfect. So, yeah, same um, here for the text. Same height as the forty. Yep, that's what I'm thinking too. And um, and so there must be something with a line width or or the or uh, the panel um, is is bigger in reality. I I don't know. I think. We will uh, have to live with this, and we're living good with this, I think. So save again. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, and we have a finished, and I hope this time a finished um, top top side of the panel. Good. Let's have a look to the needle. The needle. Bring this in again here for you. Um, how how do I construct this needle? Um, you have I, I hope you have seen um, the video of my uh, first single needle gauge of the fuel panel I have made. There uh, I'm showing exactly how I have cut out the needle and uh, how it is mounted. Um, I will explain this in a in the total. You use this four millimeter rod, and um, on top there will be the needle glued on, and inside the middle of the needle um, you make um, an engraving. I made I think a 0 0.4 0 0.5 millimeter deep engraving on my CNC. Um, a circle 4.1 millimeters uh, in diameter and so my rod um, or the, the shaft here fits inside this engraving and is glued to this yeah and and this is everything how the, the needle is mounted here just on top of it and on a laser it is a little bit uh, more complicated because you don't have um, yeah, uh, a clear defined engraving depth. You have to uh, control this by uh, using the power of the laser. And but but you haven't the ability to say I want this engraving be uh, exactly 0.4 millimeters deep. This is what you can only do on a CNC router. Yeah, I will have to find a work. As if I need this, 
defined uh, death, I will have to find a workflow to cut out the needles on the laser. This I, I, It's more easier than on the CNC because the needle is very small and because of the rotation of the, the router, uh, it can uh, come to vibrations and then the needle uh, flies away uh, or breaks, uh, something like this. And on the laser, it lies and it's cut out and nothing happens to it. So, and then I'm trying to cut out it on a laser and then bring it into a form, um, something like this, um, a, a guide, um, and then um, engrave it on the CNC. I will try something yeah, like this. But, but now we will um, continue planning this needle. So we will have a, a circle, I think 11, yeah, 11 millimeters. Uh, I have made this in, in size and then we need this uh, wide needle which uh, is part um, of this whole needle here and we see this uh, top of the needle goes nearly um, up to the end of these um, lines here. Yeah, so it fills nearly the whole uh, inside um, radius of our circle. Don't make this too long because it would collide with a circle. Uh, we will leave a little bit space here. So let's start with the needle um, on a new layer, I think. Hmm? Uh, we should do this. Needle. So here we are. Object properties. Um, there. Again, a hairline. So, and now we want this 11 millimeters wide. And now to. Yeah, when, when you don't know exactly how this needle should be um, made, how the tip uh, is formed. I have used, again, guidelines. I love guidelines. When I used um, SketchUp, for example, a 3D modeling tool, I um, came first in contact with these guidelines and this helped me model a lot. So I love guidelines. Um, angled. Let's start with a 10 degrees tip. I think this can be right, a 10 degrees tip. So um, every half of the needle is five degrees. So uh, five degrees, modify. Hmm. That was not what I, what I expected. Um, 85, I think it should be. Uh, modify, yeah, this is what I'm looking for. So uh, let's make another guideline exactly to the, to the middle, 28. And define a point where the, um, the needle should end. Just to be safe, uh, something like here. Hmm? So we have a little bit space inside. Uh, how much is this? Um, 53 and this is... One, we should uh, uh, two two millimeter space. I should uh, I want to have here fifty one. So there the needle should end. So we have two millimeter space here to the to the ring or the end of the gauge. So I uh, so we can get rid of this guideline here. And now using take this guideline and uh, if it would snap there my snap settings to guidelines. And now let's snap it here in this intersection. Now we have the left side. And now copy this. Ah, okay, there it is. And now modify it uh, to 95 degrees. So the other way around, 
You can also mirror it if you want to. Oh, and here. And I think compared to the original, oops, where is my original? There. This is looking good. So get rid of this middle guideline here. Um, get rid of all these stripes for a moment and the text and constant and focus on this needle here. Yes, now we draw we draw this line. Uh, two point line. Uh, the intersection and here. Uh, please here again hairline. I should have made my preferences uh, to hairline. I, I all always use hairline because this is the only thing uh, and and yeah and even a little bit smaller, which is uh, transferred later to your CNC program. So um, it doesn't matter if your text is big or something like this. Um, it isn't transferred like you are seeing it. But we will come to this topic a little bit later. So now um, combine these here to one single curve. This can be ready or already I'm, I will try to, oops, try to um, draw this right here cut it and come on so like this and here you can see when you have um, a gap like this then the two lines are not uh, connected to each other here not uh, completely and this can be a problem for a CNC controlling program so just grab this Hold this over it snaps and here you can see this is a right connected corner. I think this is a problem um, or um, something that you can see in, in every vector based program. I've seen this, uh, seen this in Illustrator um, 2. So here we have our needle. So uh, you don't need a laser. Uh, to cut this out. I have cut out my, my first needle on my CNC router with a rotating three millimeter bit. And uh, then, yeah, you won't come out with sharp corners here. It will be a little bit round, but this doesn't matter. The needle tip comes out sharp. And this is, um, again, the, the dangerous part uh, of cutting out the needle on a CNC router, because this can break really easy. You um, should, um, bring enough pressure on the needle during the cutting. I make this with um, um, yeah, the end of a brush and um, a small brush, no, not, not a big, big brush um, and press it a little bit down while, while the, um, the router bit is driving around. And so it is hold on the sacrificial layer. So we have this text, small stripes, big stripes, Oh, uh, yeah, the layer then we don't need. Oh, there we have our needle. Finished. Finished top panel. Okay, so we, now we have made a middle panel. We have our top panel. The engraving is prepared. Uh, the needle is prepared. Um, now let's come to the gears. And uh, yeah. So let's make um, a copy of the, um, the middle. Ah, first save, always save and get uh, rid of these guidelines. Mm. Before we come to this, I think I should um, talk a little bit. Um, I have uh, said this in my last stream, but I can, it's, it's all also important here. Um, what I have said, um, the size of the letters isn't uh, always um, yeah the the appearance that comes out on your CNC. For example, this here. 
the, the P. Let's switch to another view, um, the wireframe. We have added a contour. This is a, is a small contour. It's not um, yeah, super much important, but I can see the difference on, on my panel when I'm not adding this uh, contour. And so I think it is important to have this here. So when are you now um, exported as a DXF file for your um, uh, CNC program? Then only the original outline of the text, which is the inner line here, is exported, not the outline. And then the text will come out smaller. I wasn't aware of this fact uh, all this time. Uh, and I haven't noticed it um, because the, um, the angled engraving bit I'm using I think uh, because of the engraving depth of uh, 0.2 millimeters um, I have used, um, yeah, made this uh, engraving a little bit bigger. And so the font uh, came out right as I want it to have. And now when I uh, switched over to laser engraving, the font came out exactly as a CNC program uh, tells the, the laser to, um, to route it out. Yeah. And, um, and, and so, yeah, it, it didn't look as my previous fonts. And to and how to export this for uh, this outline here took me really a, a weekend, a weekend or longer. I will show this uh, to you here uh, in the object manager. Object manager. Who? Uh, where's my text? There. You can see there is this contour um, underneath the the text. And now we can split these by uh, right clicking and say here, break contour group apart. So now it's split it into the original text, which is the inner line and the contour, which is the outer line. And when I now, um, I said, when I now hide this original text, ah, then you don't see anything. <laughs> um, in this uh, wireframe uh, view, okay, you have to believe it to me. Then uh, this inner um, ah, ah, because ah, because we are not um, dealing with the right one. Um, there is a text. Okay, my fault, my fault again. Who knows it again? Huh? Break contour group apart and hide it there. Okay, then the the inner original text contour uh, text outline disappears, and you only leave with uh, you are left with this outer line, because otherwise you would export these both lines into your uh, CNC program, and then you would have to manually um, yeah choose which line the laser or your tool should use, or in the worst case, it could even uh, bring pro problems because uh, then only the yeah yeah the inner uh, room is filled, for example. So this is the method I'm now using to export um, my DXF files right for the tools. <coughs> Kotas, Chris, tool. How you trigger guidelines? Tool trigger guidelines. Um, when you want to uh, here, uh, uh, so first of all, when you want to use guidelines, you just have to uh, click here on the ruler and pull a guideline in here. And this uh, guideline tool can be added here by the, the plus here. And then you can uh, choose uh, what you want to see. And here you can find this guideline tool. I hope this answers your question. <coughs> so save. So, okay, this was um, the short excurs excursion to outer lines with text. So, and now, now the gears. Um, we, we need our middle plate. Air, uh, I open again the air, air, air conditioning panel gauge middle that we have made before and again save a copy of this as 
air conditioning panel bottom. So looks like the middle panel, but now we will add um, uh, a little bit more, um, yeah, cutouts for the the motors. What I have done uh, to estimate the right cutout is um, taking this motor and uh, measure the outer distance. You can also uh, look in the web for it and um, there will be construction drawings of these motors, especially if you are not using these motors I'm using, then you have to measure or look out for the measurements of your motors. Um, <clears throat> which was the last one I've cut the pneumatic gauge. Um, pneumatic gauge bottom, just to copy this. Uh, you know how to, to draw a, a rectangle here. I just want to uh, copy these values I have found out with uh, laser cutting are the best for me. This can be other, um, sizes when you use uh, a router bit then maybe you uh, have to cut out these corners a little bit in most tools there are options for this so 12.5 by 23 millimeters um where are we where's my there yeah, air conditioning page so and um, something I have um, done now. Um, you can, um, other way around, um, other way. Um, how, on, on which place should this be um, for your gears? So um, when you, when you s start um, making gears for your for panel, you have to think about which range should your needle um, be able to cover. So here from, should it cover only directly from zero to 100 or a little bit more, maybe. Um, a servo motor uh, has a range of 100 degrees, um, 90 to the left, or 90 to the right, uh, in, best in the best case. M many motors don't reach this uh, full degree area. And so I think so do mine too. I, I haven't, haven't measured this. I think um, there can be maybe four degrees uh, less, three degrees less, something like this. Um, and this um, can be a problem because then your pointer just reaches maybe here from uh, five to uh, 95, for, uh, for example. So, and um, there are ways to calculate this. So um, you have one uh, gear here again on our um, shaft here, our four millimeter shaft, there will uh, be uh, one gear, a smaller gear and a bigger gear on the motor because the needle um, has to make a wider range than your motor can. What do we have here? Uh, 180 degrees, uh, we have calculated this, uh, 252 degrees we have to cover, maybe a little bit more um, when I change these uh, degree values here. Let's say uh, 255 you have to cover. And so you have to make, uh, yeah, come out with a, a gear combination that uh, makes uh, from the 180 degrees, 255 degrees. Uh, for the needle. So um, this you can calculate, there are formulas uh, in the web and uh, one user also has um, posted it under my um, first um, gauge video, a formula, um, how to calculate uh, um, this and this works uh, good. Um, yeah, but but there's always the fear a little bit then uh, that something can, can go, go wrong. And these gears have different uh, diameters uh, because the more teeth you add to the gear, the bigger it, it will become. And so the, the, radi the 
the outline of the gear will be bigger and I have to place the motor um, on a different place. Uh, the cutout for the motor on the bottom panel. Yeah, the, the bottom yeah, panel. Um, and this is something I don't want to think every time new. Uh, I want to come out with a gear combination that can cover nearly um, 360 degrees. Um, yeah, and, and I can use it in every of my gauges. And in, in ProSim later, I can um, define uh, from which to which value um, the, the motor can turn to, to reach any number here on the, on the gauge. And so I, I don't have to calculate every time new and, and uh, place uh, yeah, and design every panel uh, different from another one. I think for me, this makes it easier. You can uh, choose another way if you want to um yeah but that's these are my my thoughts behind it and so i will um again use uh, gears that i have um yeah made for uh, my new dual needle gauge here but i will show you the the, the process of making this in general so so that you can so you have then the knowledge uh, of, of making your own gears if you need to. So uh, what have we? Indian aviator, step, stepper motors. Another builder uses X27.589 with hull effect sensor to find zero position. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, motors are a completely different topic uh, again um, I have used these really cheap um, what are these called SG90 SG90 motors um, costs of nearly under five five bucks in the piece I think uh, three bucks three dollars the piece it's extremely cheap um, and you have to yeah, be aware that uh, there are plastic gears inside here. Um, other motors that um, are a little bit more expensive um, come with metal gears inside. They will last longer. Um, yeah, I have bought these um, because I was starting with motors and um, yeah. Uh, want to try out and not to invest uh, much money when I don't know anything about uh, motors. Um, so um, I have some of these still uh, here and so I will use them. Um, but for panels uh, or gears that are used very often or with uh, much friction, for example, when you want to uh, build um, um, a motorized throttle, I wouldn't use uh, motors with plastic gears. Then you should um, go to something stronger and uh, dur more durable. Yeah. Some uh, even uh, use, I think these uh, are these X27 uh, motors, are these stepper motors? Uh, you, this is a seven motor. You can also use stepper motors. Then uh, you can, yeah, come clearer to uh, define position and what uh, the aviator said here uh, you can uh, come with a defined uh, zero position or it can um, yeah, see in, in what position it it is i have looked at at stepper motors uh, too i i wasn't aware of the fact uh, that they are so so small and, and can also be used here at um, at gauges and they don't cost really much um i was thinking how can i um uh, yeah um connect a gear to such a stepper motor you have to uh, imagine a stepper motor that comes only a small needle out there here with this motor there is also a, yeah, a little bigger gear on top of it and i can glue my gear too and on a uh, out of a stepper motor um there only comes a, such a small needle and I was afraid that I can't uh, connect my gear to this needle so that it holds really good. 
No? I hope you understand what my fears are here. But yeah, stepper motors could be also a good uh, alternative to these servo motors. So now back to um, gears here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is my, mm, these are my fusion projects where I have some some files that I use. You can see my, my teasers uh, and annunciators. By the way, you can get any of these files from, uh, from the member section of my website. And so you don't have to invest so much time. Here I have some, some gears here that I have already made. They are not uh, arranged very good. I have to find a better solution for um, using, uh, for arranging these so I can organize them. Just in general, how to make gears. Um, there is a plugin here for Fusion. Uh, you can uh, reach here under add-in scripts, add-ins. So, and it's called Spore Gear. So it has been, I, I don't know why or how it can be added uh, forever here to the menu. I have to edit every time new after I started um, uh, Fusion. So now here on the create module, we will find the Spore Gear there. And I hope you can just, I have to see uh, that you can see everything there. In the, we can just get rid of this panel here. So, and again, in this um, menu, you can define everything you need for your gears. The number of tiers for uh, teeth, for example, my small gear that will sit on my shaft, on the acrylic shaft will have um, 13 teeth. I think these values are nearly correct. Um, and the module, the module defines how um, big, um, here you can see the, the formula for the, the module. Um, I haven't get this uh, exactly. Um, I'm also uh, estimating it a little bit. It has something to do with this uh, pitch, how much, uh, how uh, wide these uh, teeth are away from each other. And yeah, the, the number of teeth on the, on the gear. But in general, the smaller this module uh, value is, the smaller are the tiers and the distance between these. And the more difficult it can be to uh, cut out on your tools. With, um, with my CNC, I have cut out these with, um, I think, a, a 1.4 millimeter router bit. This was the smallest I had uh, to cut out these tiers, uh, these gears. Um, here you can see, nah, nearly no one here. This is uh, cut out on my uh, CNC. For example, um, yeah, nearly one, one, yeah, one point uh, seven millimeters uh, of width in each teeth. I have tried with a 0.8 millimeter bit that broke. I broke three of these router bits. Uh, it didn't work. Um, yeah, with, on the laser, I can go much smaller. Here you can see 0.86 uh, was something I have cut out and I think I can go even smaller if I want to. Yeah, that's it. Um, so what we need, um, Again, and, and the, the module is in combination with this, I think with this root fillet radius here, which is this radius here of this corner. So uh, I have to define the, the thickness of the gear, which uh, isn't important because uh, we want to come out with a 2D um, drawing and then the thickness uh, doesn't matter. But the whole diameter, this is important and I will uh, choose here my the four millimeters of my shaft. Oh, and you can see here already, uh, the pitch diameter is 11.18 uh, millimeter. I come to this later. This is the circle you should uh, consider in your 
drawing later. So when, when I click here on OK, there it is, the new gear. Let's move it just uh, here now for you. I have made these gears uh, already. I think here, here it is. So um, there we have this, this gear. Let's uh, switch to a front view there. This is the, the gear that will sit on our shaft. And to make a DXF file out of it for my laser or your CNC, I have used here the, what have I done? Ah, here, um, a drawing on top of it. And then used the project to command. So to the outline. There it is projected and here the, we end this sketch and here we find this new sketch which we can, oh you can't see it, you can't see it here. Um, how can I show this? Whoop, there you can see it. And with a right click you can save it as a DXF file and then you're ready, nearly ready to go in, in your CNC tool. I have named these here different. Um, Z for Zahn in Germany. Uh, so you can uh, also call it uh, with a T for teeth. Um, we have here, for example, um, this here. We have uh, 28 teeth on this gear here, an inside diameter of 4.8 millimeters for this hole here, and a module of 0. 0.0. A, uh, of 0.86 millimeters. So uh, with this I can find the gear I need for uh, a shaft. So this is the gear uh, for the for the um, the shaft and now we need the gear for uh, the the motor and this is uh, done I think I, I don't have to show this again it's done with the same method um, I have to think what uh, te teeth I'm using. I think here the the 28 teeth. Yeah, a 28 teeth gear I'm using. Here you can see this. This uh, gear will sit on top of the motor. Of course, with a diameter. With which diameter we have here, <clears throat> we can uh, we can we can also see this here of 4.8 millimeters diameter for for the motor but uh, this you have to um, design uh, for what you need for your um, motor yeah oh, by the way motor indian aviator has uh, left a uh, message yeah it's just 1.6 dollar each and they are cheap too uh, stepper motors the x27 yes <clears throat> yeah I, th I think i've i have um, looked out of this uh, stepper motor when you want to use stepper motors, this uh, is exactly um, the thing you can use. You will have to find uh, another solution for uh, mounting it into your gauge then. You need another um, cutout, yeah, but then you are ready to go. And by the way, here you can see this, this circle here around uh, this gear. This is the uh, pitch diameter and we can also measure it um, 24.8. So let's uh, just for me to copy, let me write down uh, these numbers. Very old on paper. Okay, 11.18 is the pitch diameter of the small gear and here we have uh, 24.08 millimeter for the big gear on the motor and these and this is um yeah the region where the two tiers grab into each other and this is so so you can um get the distance of the two um, gears to each other so back back to um our core draw we have the cutout for the motor yeah it's, it doesn't matter on which side uh, you have it. 
Um, let's open a drawing of the motor so that you can see another thing you should take into consideration. Um, where we have it. So now you get a, a really a, an insight of my my planning of making all these uh, these panels and and videos where I have it. Uh, one moment, one moment. Uh, where it is? Is it here? Nah, come on, cages. There we are. Okay, here on my home server, I have here um, my notes, and I when I when I go out to the through the uh, internet, and I'm seeing something. Oh, this can be interesting for a future project, or uh, not, not for not for now, but uh, I have to plan for the future. And when I think, oh, in four years this can be uh, interesting, then I save it here for me, and so I have a big. Uh, collection made here and this is something I could recommend to you make your collection um, collect your informations and yeah here's some, uh, the top uh, the post the user has written for calculating um, the gears for example and here we have the, the drawing of my motor um, and you can see the outline but the 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 center of rotation here sits 5.5 millimeters uh, away from the top. So, and this is something I have now to uh, take into consideration here later, just for you to know. Make uh, two circles just uh, temporarily, which will um, yeah, be a placeholder for our um, now the circle of these gears, I have already forgotten the name, the pitch ratio. I think it's, it's it? No, oh, I don't know. 11 point, 11.18. This is the one uh, for the shaft. Hey, Rich Kapoor. Hello, nice to have you here. Join us, we're having fun with making gear uh, gauges and 24.08 this is uh, the gear for the on the motor so just to, so to, to get a sense of uh, how big our gears will be and you can already see it um, yeah it, it can't be so good uh, so it, this this should be the later the the goal to align the edges of these circles in yeah maybe maybe this distance from each other not not uh, the the perfect would be that the lines uh, at this point uh, will be exactly over each other but i think if something wiggles wrong and the here this cutout isn't 100% exactly then uh, the gears could uh, block each other and so i'm bringing it a little bit away from each other. So, and you can see the gear would come out over the um, yeah, the edge of our gauge. And so it can be maybe better to place it somewhere here. So it doesn't uh, stick out too much here. A little bit more like here, uh, maybe huh? here. You have to take into consideration that here uh, sits this um, holder around here, this um, hex standoff. It has also a, a diameter, so we can't go too near to this post here, but somewhere in this this area. So now, um, I think this already looks good. I want to be a little bit more away from this here. More like this. Wow, this looks good. Um, so here is our gear. And now I want to place the edge 
of this motor cutout exactly on the middle here. So I will copy the values. So the X value. There it is. And the Y value. Here we have to switch to the upper corner for the, nah, come on. Oh. Oh. And now I have shown you again here, this 5.5 millimeter offset. We have to um, keep in mind now, so the cutout has to move up by 5.5 millimeters, there. And that's it. That's it already. Um, now we have the, the cutout for the shaft. Is it right, by the way? We have to look out. Yes, 4.5 millimeters. I think with the laser, I will make this a little bit smaller now. Um, 4.2. Hmm. 4.2. When you um, when I have cut out this on my CNC router, then 4.5 was good. It could be a little bit less. Yeah, but but it should not be so small that you only um, can get your shaft hard uh, hard uh, force through it. Then it uh, won't turn very well. Yeah, but but that's it already. Believe it or not, we have now. Um, yeah made uh, the gears. We have uh, defined where the shaft uh, should uh, go. And ah, something we, we will need. Um, I will show this in big here to you. And to go. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Indian aviator. Don't forget to look uh, the last thing I will um, make now later uh, offline. Good night. Um, so I will switch over to the total and show this very in detail to you. I hope you can see this up here <laughs> on top. There is hot glue, but underneath this hot glue, there is a small ring, an, an acrylic ring, um, because the needle um, ah, here in, in the middle form, there are also two uh, there. Yeah, there in the and on, on the other side there are two two rings uh, around this middle plate and what are these two rings doing um, to prevent the needle from sliding out of the gauge no? it, it hangs here like this uh, on the overhead and to prevent it from falling out I will place one ring uh, underneath this um, middle plate here and secure it with hot glue so it can't fall out. And to prevent it from falling too much down, I will uh, place the other ring here on top of this um, middle plate here. And so it is clamped um, yeah, around this middle plate here. Uh, why don't I want to fall it too much down here? Could you think because there is a plate on top of it and um, where should it fall? Yes, it shouldn't scrap, uh, scratch on uh, the surface of our um, uh, top plate because we have invested time and uh, to, to paint and engrave it. And uh, when the needle would turn and scratch uh, on this top, then the color would be away, um, maybe. And to prevent it from doing this, I place uh, two pieces of paper as a placeholder and pressing the needle on onto these uh, papers. So I have my defined distance and then I fix this ring. And to make these rings, um, yeah, you can do this here uh, on, the, on the same drawing here. Just get rid of these two rings here and just draw another ring. I have made these, I think also 11, 
11 millimeters wide. Hmm. Ah, uh, maybe. And <clears throat> yeah, and, and that's it already. Uh, you can use this outer ring here and this inner ring and you can see what comes out is a is a ring that you can use on your CNC to uh, cut out this this ring as a holder for your shaft. Oh 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 you haven't seen this. Oopala, my my fault. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um here you have it. you should say something to me when I'm not showing you here again. Um here is the here's the ring and here's the and the inner ring um and so we come out with a an acrylic ring uh, around the the middle shaft uh you will cut out two of these and um yeah and now you can use it as a as a holder manual cheeses paper to minimize friction um i i uh Pull out the paper after I've done it. No, I don't leave the paper uh, underneath the, the needle. Um, I use uh, the, the the two papers just uh, to uh, use the thickness of the two papers um, uh, as a as a distance holder for the for, for the needle to the top um, panel hmm? where it lies. So there is a little bit space between the needle and the top plate of the gauge you know, just a space holder you can use anything you want a filler gauge for example uh, will also do the job but it's made from metal and it could already damage your top plate so i'm using paper yeah yeah that's it we have designed um, a single needle gauge one word because I have uh, I have one uh, some sentence uh, because I have promised this. Um, I have showed this many times now. Um, dual needle gauges. There is a difference. Yes. Um, come on. Let's make a, a quick look here to the pneumatic gauge bottom. You can see we have two cutouts uh, for the motors because we need two motors. I use. You, you know this already, my good four millimeter inner shaft. And now stay tuned. We use, um, what is it? I think a, a, seven, a seven millimeter outer shaft. It's an acrylic um, tube. And this shaft fits inside. Let's make this a little bit um, bigger. So, and uh, this shaft whoop, here fits inside this other tube and runs into it. So, and now let's see the end. So there you can, can see. Um, on the outer shaft, there runs the one needle and on top of the inner shaft, like we have uh, designed our uh, other needle here, runs uh, the needle above the other one and so um yeah so you have two needles on on top of the panel and on the bottom you have uh, to deal with the same thing um one gear is glued to the outer shaft one gear sits on the inner shaft and so your motors and this you can see here on the gear and so your motors to sit on uh, different levels because uh, yeah, you can see the the upper one, the upper motor here um, is driving the outer shaft, and the lower motor here is uh, driving the inner shaft and the gear of it. Well, that's it, and you have to find a solution. Uh, what we have talked about uh, before. Um, preventing the the needle from uh, sliding out or too too much in and this for both needles um yeah and this is what what i have done here um around the 
middle plate here, I have placed the, the rings for the outer shaft to prevent the, the outer shaft from uh, sliding away. And uh, the needle can't come too deep here um, because, so uh, why, you know, I, I have uh, placed some spaces underneath this needle here uh, between the uh, lower and upper needle. And on the end, there is my um, acrylic ring that uh, prevents the inner shaft from sliding out too much. When I'm talking about this, yes, there is another method. What I've said before, two, um, two rings uh, around the middle plate for the outer shaft and two rings around the bottom uh, plate for the inner shaft, I think, yeah. This can get a, a little bit uh, tricky inside here because now you can see uh, we have to deal with uh, four different gears, two motors, uh, one spacer, another spacer down there. Um, yeah, a little bit tricky to, to um, place the hot glue on the right place, but this could work. Um, so, and yeah, and, and you can see I have made here another plate um, that I can cut out to um, yeah, act as a, a shim, a shim uh, for the motor. I have cut out two of these uh, rings here, no, not, not rings, uh, um, rectangles, um, frames. So that's uh, the word, two of these frames uh, to get one of the motors a little bit higher above um, the other one. That's all you have to take into consideration uh, for dual needle gears, uh, gauges. So, yeah, have we have we forgotten anything? I have shown you to make a, a top plate with engraving uh, cutouts and so on, a middle plate, which wasn't uh, really difficult, um, a bottom plate with a cutout. For the motors, uh, I have showed you how to make gears. By the way, I have uh, shown the, the gear making um, again in my first gauge making video. So you can look this up in detail and a little bit compressed form. Sure, this is what I wanted to show in the stream for today. And yeah, there are no, no more questions in the chat, I think. So stay stay tuned for the next video. I think next uh, Sunday uh, will be the video uh, about this dual needle gauge video here. Really nice looking um, needles here, by the way. So don't miss this. Thank you to all for um, being part of this live stream here. Again, thank you for your um, feedback in the chat. And I hope you have now the knowledge to make your own um, gauges at home. Or if you don't want to invest so much uh, time, then you can just uh, join the member section on my, my website and then you can download every file I'm creating here so you can save some time. Cost, uh, you know, Costas Cristolo, thank you for being here. Manuel Jesus, one more. The paper is only to space. Right, right. As I said, the paper is only uh, the space between the needle and the um, uh, top plate. And then it is uh, taken away. And uh, the needle stays at the level because we have glued uh, the, the rings in place between uh, in, in during this time and then remove the paper. Right. So then to all have a good day, evening, whatever time it is now to uh, now at your place. And we'll see us um, soon back in the next episode of Mikey's flight deck. And as I always say, I hope we'll see us soon back on the flight deck.